This is a photograph of Wing Commander John Catsize Cunningham. He was a highly decorated wartime pilot and later worked as a test pilot for the de Havilland Aircraft Company. But why was he called Cat's Eyes? After war broke out, Cunningham became an RAF officer. If war was declared, I had to make up my mind. Was I going to go with the squadron or remain with the company? Yeah. I made up my mind instantly. I would go with the squadron. Yes. Because I'd had three years training as a fighter pilot. He initially flew the Bristol Blenheim as a night fighter, but there were limitations in this aircraft. He later transferred to the Bristol Bowfighter, which also had operational issues as a night fighter. In 1941, he was ordered to report to Geoffrey de Havilland at Hatfield, where he flew the prototype de Havilland Mosquito W4050. This is the actual plane we have in the de Havilland Museum today. He concluded that it would be a perfect replacement for the Bristol Bowfighter. At the museum we have models of each of the aircraft types which John Cunningham flew. The Blenheim, the Bowfighter and finally the night fighter version of the Mosquito. Cunningham achieved a number of kills of enemy bombers at night using these aircraft which were equipped with an early version of airborne radar. We in the bow fighter, as a night fighter, we always had a, uh, ourselves and a radar operator. We yes. flew as a pair, as a, a team. And um, I was fortunate in that my other half in the aeroplane, Jimmy Rawnsley, was my radar operator. He was, in fact, in civilian life, uh, an electrical engineer, and uh, he uh, had a, uh, as good an understanding as anyone of what this radar set could do, or could information it could give us. Mm. And um, I then was fortunate to have the first successful uh, combat at night on which the German aircraft arrived on the ground, uh, shot down. In 1941, the British press was allowed to write about Cunningham's exploits. The Air Ministry did not want to allow the enemy to learn about airborne radar, but how to explain his successes? They spread the story that he had a diet of carrots, which provided him with vitamin A to help his eyesight. The story so that they put up was that I had exceptional night vision. Yes. And... Um, but in addition, uh, we were able to improve or get the best out of our eyes at night if we had a vitamin which could be found in carrots. Yeah. And uh, because the carrot grew all the year round in England, it could be uh, eaten by children through the year and give everyone the vitamins that they normally in peacetime would have had from oranges which weren't imported here during the war. And so the two stories combined uh, that I had exceptional night vision and that we ate carrots. Well, uh, that was uh, not true. <laughs> but it was an ingenious explanation which we, yes. we should never know whether the Germans bought that explanation or not. Well, I think the uh, British public did yeah. to some extent but I still get reminded that people who didn't like eating carrots. <laughs> so the legend of Cat's Eyes Cunningham was created. Cunningham's combat career ended with 20 aerial victories, three probables and six damaged. In 1944, Cunningham was again asked to test fly the brand new de Havilland Vampire, which was the first jet fighter built by de Havilland. The very first vampire to be fitted with a ghost was the aeroplane that I used to gain the world altitude record oh, yeah. in yeah. 1948. Yes. And that was the vampire to 59,500 feet or so. The following year, he went on to test the de Havilland DH-106 Comet, 
the world's first commercial jet airliner. He continued to test fly prototypes such as the Comet 3 and the Comet 4 in the late 1950s and was involved with the design of the DH-121 Trident airliner. In 1955, he was awarded the gold medal of the Royal Aero Club. In 1956, he travelled to the United States and received the Harmon Trophy from President Dwight D. Eisenhower. It was the most prestigious American trophy for services of civil aviation. We are delighted to say that John Cunningham's actual trophy is now on display here in the museum in honour of the many achievements of Cat's Eyes Cunningham. Following his death, his legacy was one of the sources of funding that contributed to the formation of this very museum, the oldest aircraft museum in the UK dedicated to one aircraft manufacturer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like it and share it on social media. Do subscribe to our channel so you can see other videos like this as we produce them. Do check out our website for opening times. Please come and visit us at the museum in London Coney. Incidentally, do not forget to eat lots of carrots to help your eyesight. We look forward to seeing you at the museum.